Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 16, Chapter 1, The Betrayal, Part 6. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the Tensura Light Novel. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Get him, Beretta Chan. Ramirez shouted loudly, as if she had been filled with energy. Ramirez herself never fought, of course. Dino thought that would happen, so he didn't laugh at it and went up to Beretta to see what he could do. The control room became a war zone. It was a pretty big room, but there were a lot of desks and chairs in the way. It wasn't a good place to fight, so Ramirez wanted to move somewhere else. Dino, on the other hand, didn't think this was okay. Because there was a good chance Ramirez would run away. As a result, while the two were facing each other, Alpha and the others were busy acquiring the important equipment. Dino and Beretta started fighting without paying attention to their surroundings. Dino suddenly pulled out a sword as tall as he was. This great sword was called the Crumbling Fang, Kuzarekiba. It was a single-bladed sword with a heavy body that appeared to be powerful enough to break an opponent simply by its weight. It was a big, heavy weapon that stood out against Dino, who was wearing light clothes, a breastplate, and a robe. Still, it looked very elegant and natural. How well does that sword do its job? It's worth a million in terms of existence value. Alpha couldn't hide how shocked she was by the news. What the heck, a mythical grade. That's a foul play, even if it's Dino. Ramirez yelled a complaint that was hard to understand, but Dino just ignored her. Dino moved his Kuzarekiba so that it was now above his head. On the other hand, Beretta didn't have any weapons. But his body was made out of the magical steel doll that Rimuru had created. Now that it knew how Beretta's magic worked, it had been changed into a living magic steel. It looked the same as when Rimuru made it, but it was stronger than anything else. Since it was filled with Beretta's magical aura, it would make normal weapons useless. Beretta was a legendary or better full-body weapon that was the hardest thing to find in the labyrinth. Even so, Dino just swung his big sword down. Beretta didn't think twice about going around it. Not having a weapon wasn't a problem, but the situation was bad this time. The existence value of Beretta was over 400,000, which was almost the same as that of Dino. But Beretta wouldn't be able to compete well unless he had weapons of mythical quality. Beretta, who had nothing in his hands, tried to avoid Dino's sword blows instead of taking them straight on. If the blade had hit Beretta, he would have died right away. And even worse, Dino's existence value has gone up from 400,000 to 2 million. There are 3 million. What a shock. Alpha sent in a desperate report. But Beretta didn't seem to care. Ramirez didn't seem surprised either, as if he was used to it. I don't know how it happened, but you tricked the existence value measuring device. I guess that means there are still ways to get better. Also, Alpha, stop being so nice when you talk about Dino. Hey, no problem. Am I still a demon lord, too? Shut up. Beretta Chan, you don't have to be nice either, so hurry up and show your true strength. Let that fool feel God's punishment. I don't have that much power, but if it's in order, I'll do what I can. Beretta was as dedicated as ever. Even though the existence value was just a rough guess, there was still a big difference of over seven times. Even though Beretta thought Ramirez could be very unreasonable, he did what his master asked and kept a close eye on Dino. You, too, are not easy to deal with. I don't want my enemy to say that, but I won't deny it. Beretta answered while he was trying to get away, so he circled Dino. As long as the attacks didn't hit, there was no need to defend. The key was to think outside the box. Beretta used his entire body as a weapon. His bare hands didn't hold him back. On the other hand, they could be used as different kinds of weapons. On the other hand, Dino had few weapons, so the big sword was the only thing to watch out for. The circumstances were similar in that a hit would result in a powerful strike. He still had a chance to win because of this. Beretta thought the same thing and had been on the lookout for chances. Beretta was very good at changing his traits because he was a chaos doll. Using his unique skill, Double Crosser, he could constantly switch from one attribute to another and look for Dino's weak points. He was facing Dino and planning his next move so that things would go in his favor. Dino was upset because he was the one who was attacked. Geez, you're a black line dependent, aren't you? I've heard that your kind is one of the best at fighting dirty. I'm honored by your kind words. Who's giving you a compliment? Even the way people talked was used as a weapon by Beretta as he tried to turn things around. There wasn't any room for error. Because Beretta was not impatient, he just about managed to keep things the same. 
On the other hand, Dino. After he correctly figured out what was going on, he realized that he was not in a good position. The surprise attack that didn't work was a big mistake. It had led to more fights that didn't need to happen, and the plan had been ruined. Beretta wasn't strong enough to make up for the big difference in power. Also, their experience in battle was too different. But Beretta, as a member of the Black Line, was just as skilled as Dino. Even though he was in a situation where a single blow would instantly kill him, he gathered the courage to appraise Dino's attack carefully. He never gave up on winning, and he even seemed to enjoy being in that situation. Dino even gave Beretta a chance, but Beretta did not take the bait. Even though that was great on its own, Dino was surprised that he was sometimes hurt by counterattacks. The Fallen weren't very good at dealing with things that were holy attributes, but that wasn't a fatal flaw. Still, Beretta's attack was hurting the enemy. It was a hit that was both holy and evil, and not even Dino's defense barrier could stop it. Dino, who used to be a seraph and knew the rules of this world, couldn't believe that a unique level skill could hurt him. Beretta's skill in battle was amazing and deserved praise. Dino, on the other hand, was getting used to how Beretta moved. Dino knew that the gap would get bigger the more he swung his big sword. Beretta used the space between them to attack him, which would have been unexpected but acceptable. At first glance, it looked like Beretta was controlling Dino because Dino's attacks barely touched him. But, Kuzurekiba, could cut through even an adamantite body without much trouble. Dino didn't see a problem because he knew it would only take one blow to change things. Beretta was also aware of what was going on and was just wasting time. Beretta seemed to have decided that he couldn't beat Dino by getting more and more attacks, so he was concentrating more on defense. Beretta wins when he is able to protect Ramirez. Dino wasn't a fool, either, because he could read Beretta's mind. As long as Ramirez was there, no one would die in the labyrinth. On the other hand, if Ramirez died, the labyrinth would end right away. If she was taken, there was no guarantee that the labyrinth would be safe, so it made sense for Beretta to focus on buying time. If things kept going like this, Beretta would get what he wanted in the end. But things wouldn't be that simple. Dino still had a hand, which was bad for Beretta. Dino was putting Beretta off because he needed to get Beretta out of the way. It was hard to fight against someone who would keep coming back even after you killed him. He wished he could just get to Ramirez before Beretta came back to life, but he knew that if that happened, the others would get in the way. If he attacked with the goal of killing, Ramirez could be caught up in it. Dino really didn't want to kill Ramirez when he said he didn't plan to, and that became a chain that tied him to the situation and made things harder for him. This really is a big problem. I can't believe how much work it takes to stop Beretta from doing anything. It would have been easier to just beat him, but I guess it doesn't matter now that I've finished getting ready. You did a great job, Beretta. Now, slothful sleep, fall in hypno. Dino let out all of his power. It was a wide range, non-lethal attack from the unique skill, sloth. All living things would be put to sleep and wouldn't be able to wake up until the person who cast the spell woke them up. Only people with ultimate skill could stop it, though. It was a scary attack that could be called the strongest at the unique skill level. Dino wanted to stop Beretta and the others without hurting them too much. He didn't want to hurt Shinji, Alpha, and the other people who were trying to protect Ramirez in the control room. Vesta, who was the first person he put to sleep, was also his boss, and he had a lot of respect for him. I really didn't want to betray them, though. But Feldway's orders were firm, and he had no choice but to follow them. I'm really sorry. Don't feel bad. I'll ask Feldway to leave this area alone. Dino said something to himself as Beretta went down. He looked at the sleeping Ramirez and thought he was finally done with his job. He put out his hand to her. I won't let you. He stopped in his tracks when he heard a cold voice. Seriously. When Dino turned around, he saw a woman there. The tiny hairs on her body were gold and silver and shone. The adamantite exoskeleton protected the important parts. She had two sets of blue wings that shone like those of a morpho butterfly. They were the same color as the eyes on her forehead, which gave her an air of mystery. The woman's real name was Apito, and she had just woken up from a long sleep caused by evolution. Apito, just in time. I need you to destroy my holy devil core. Since demons don't need to sleep, it was hard for Beretta to fight off the fallen Hypno. Even though he was in a low activity state called, sleep mode, he did everything he could to ask Apito for help. Beretta-sama, you can't move, but you're still conscious? Dino took a moment to respond because he was shocked. So, he couldn't stop Apito from doing what she was going to do. Apito sent her poison-tipped needle to destroy Beretta's holy demon core without asking why. Beretta laughed. Ha ha ha, well done. 
With this, I'll die and come back to life unharmed. I'll let you handle things for now, Apito. Understood. I don't think I'll be able to beat him, so I'll be glad when you get back soon. In spite of what she said, Apito's voice sounded sure that she would win. Dino also seemed to know this, because he muttered in a frustrated way. Are you kidding me? Such an accurate judgment, so there's nothing you can do with it. Dino was right about what he thought. Beretta turned into a tiny piece of light and let Apito handle the rest. After that, Apito went faster than the speed of sound. The fight in the control room got worse and worse. Thank you.